Hi guys. How are you? How you doing? Fine, are you? Really, really good. good. Really How good. do you back on your last album, No Sound Without Silence? What, what, what is the feeling that you have of the album now? Uh, the feeling of the album? Um, I, I, I don't know, to be honest, because we're, we're kind of always too busy looking forward. Yeah. You know, we, um, obviously the, the, the album was a huge success for us. Um, we, in the No Sound Without Silence tour, we played to over half a million people worldwide, yeah. which was incredible. You know, for a band from Ireland who played our first show to about 26 people. Yeah. Um, to have that amount of people, you know, want to see you, let alone pay to see you, you know, yeah. it, was a whole, it was a whole other thing. So looking back, I guess, you know, um, we couldn't have asked for a better, a better record. But again, we're always looking forward. So we're back out with Freedom Child now. And, um, yeah. now why, why I ask this question is because normally you have some sort of national transition between touring your previous album and then starting your new album. Yeah, so sure. in, in hindsight, what, what, what was your starting point for this album? Can you? The can start, you yeah, the starting point was, um, was probably about a year ago. We'd, um, we'd been kind of recording bits and pieces um, I never really kind of were happy with what we were doing, but there was like one or two songs that came along. What um, songs? What songs? The, I think the concept of Freedom Child yeah. um, came along, and it kind of went well. That's that's a great banner to to write under, you know. And um, with everything that's going on in the news these days, um, we just found that you know we wanted to be a bit of a reflection of society, what was going on. We've never been a preachy band. We've never been you know political band. But what we are is a true reflection on society because we we just write about what's going on in yeah. our lives and nine times out of ten, it's a, it's it's kind of what everybody else is feeling. So then, Freedom Child is 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 an is an important song on the album. Yeah, it's an incredibly important song on the album. Um, it's it's kind of like our mantra. What you know, what it's freedom? Sorry. It's go on, sorry. What what to what what uh, what started the song? Um, actually, Mark, it's Mark started the song. Yeah, it was one of those moments where uh, my young boy, seven-year-old boy, uh, was asking me the news and everything was penetrating his life and he, was, he, he had a, a situation in school where they were running drills in case of a terrorist act mm -hmm. and, uh, and he just asked me what was terrorism and that's incredibly hard to answer a seven-year-old boy. What did you say? Well, all I could do was kind of equate it to say it's kind of like bullying in school. Yeah. Um, they want you to be afraid and uh, sometimes people are showing you hate but in the face of hate uh, I believe you've got to show them love you can't you can't show people hate doesn't beat hate love beats hate it's the only way to combat that I think and, yeah. um, and, and listen to people I often uh, somebody what somebody's saying is not what they mean you know um, Often beneath the surface of what somebody's saying is a, is a, is a totally different meaning. Yeah. So uh, the only way to kind of advise him was to write a song about it because I thought maybe that's what you'd understand. Because a song creates repetition, and I suppose him repeating certain phrases and certain uh, mantras in there would would drill into his head that he should show people love and he should have tolerance and he should have he should you know listen to. All the people around them and in the school, and not and not necessarily uh, try combat what they're doing. You know, th th um, trying to fight somebody who's fighting is not always the best thing to do. Sometimes it's best to listen. You know. What is what is his favorite lyrical part of the song? The middle eight actually is his favorite part, where it says, uh, "Put a flower in the top of a gun, put confetti in an atomic bomb. It's time to change because we've seen enough. Instead of war, we're declaring love." And weirdly enough, that's what he likes the best. So what was that? That was the first first really song that you said. Well, this is the course that we have to follow. Yeah, it was. It was more. Sometimes you need a mantra, um, something that you is like an umbrella that all the other songs can live under. Yeah. And Freedom Child became really important to us because um, it's about freedom of expression, freedom to think, dance, play. And the way we we have lived and the way we like to do it. So, um, for us as a band, uh, it, it became really important because we wanted the freedom to evolve and change and and, and write about many different subjects and things uh, and change your sound. And often people will pigeonhole you in, in a particular yeah. sound, and you want to be able to break those chains, uh, creative chains, and and just be able to be creative. Because we're songwriters at the end of the day, you know. Just because we're in a band doesn't mean we have 
we have to stick to a certain sound and we've never really done that so um, so that became important to us as a band and you know escapism is another thing that is part of uh, your freedom um, Rain I believe our song Rain and we've other songs like No Man Is An Island on the album which are more about escapism and I believe they're extremely important under the Freedom Child umbrella because they uh, the freedom to just dance and be a little bit mindless and just enjoy yourself is as much about your freedom as everything else. You know? Is it hard, hard sometimes to to really escape what's 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 going on? I think it's impossible. I think mm. I think we you know we've we've done a lot of interviews, and I think the more that we do interviews, the more you realise that it's just it's on the forefront of everybody's face. You know, yeah. you can't uh, you can't open up BBC News without seeing something stupid that Trump said or seeing you know some some villages after getting blown up or some needless it's just all needless violence things that shouldn't be happening don't need to happen you know and i think from the from the top down we need to be preaching tolerance you know with the i don't think religion well particularly catholicism i think in ireland it used to be massive uh, be able to teach you know kids morals and you can believe in god or not or whatever but you have to respect the moral system which is there and I think the more that you minimize all of that down, play it down, it's kind of like we're almost losing the sense of morality and what's going on. And as, a, as an artist, it's, it's almost like your duty to, 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 to not to show, not to preach, not to say you need to do this, but just to lead by example. And I think if you are a tolerant person and if, you, um, you know, if you, that's what your message is, I think you should put that into your art. And I think that it let your art speak for itself. Like I said, we're not on a soapbox. We're not trying to tell anybody how to live or what to do. We're like, you know what? If you feel the same as us, well, come on over here and listen to this music. It's not being. We're not trying to change the world. We're not trying to do anything like that. We're just trying to reflect what's going on in our life down onto a piece of paper and play it on a guitar, and that's it. You know. It's Steve, because you said, well, um, 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 that that uh, you. Don't have to believe in God, but as as long as you have some sort of moral belief, uh, is it sometimes lacking nowadays? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, for sure. I think um, we're we're the news, um, unfortunately, is picking up on stories around the world that are I think are, are shocking us all more and more every day. Uh, I, I've seen uh, a ninety-year-old woman in the news today who got beaten up at her doorstep. I mean, it's just unbelievable what a young woman beat her up. But you how know. come this happens? Well, I don't know how. I'd like to know why and I think the only way to know why is listen. Um, I don't think it's our business to ask how at all. I, th I would like to know why somebody would be compelled to beat up an old woman, let's say, or or um, uh, like the stories that are going on in America right now or like the stories that are going on in North Korea. I think they're all equally as important. I think we just need to listen for a second and stop judging and, um, and have tolerance in this crazy world right now. And the only way to do that is by sitting back and, and, and just listening. And sometimes that, it, you know, that comes in, in the form of music or that comes in the form of somebody just spilling their heart out to you. I think it's our job to listen, not, not to always be talking with the intent or listening with the intent to reply, you know. You said music-wise also some, some differences. Um, is there one song that, that, that started this, this musical direction? Hmm. Uh, I I don't think there. I mean, we have a song that we probably started very early on, was "Rock the World," which was quite exciting for us because uh, as a band we had played many many massive shows. We've been blessed playing huge shows in our lives, and um, we I suppose trying to bottle up that feeling of being on stage and and then also sharing it with our significant others, meaning our partners and the people who stand behind us. It's nice for particularly for myself. I'm a married man, and I like to look at my wife who I've been with before the script ever took off and I'd like to look at her in her eyes and say you know what shit we did it you know we managed to get through all the adversity and we're managing to pay our bills right now and things are going good and, and it's nice to look at that person and, and know that they helped you reach those goals as much as anything else so I think that that was a nice joyous moment and a triumphant moment to have and that that particular song on the album did kick off um, a sonic template that was slightly different than we'd gone for before. It was very larger than life. I suppose we have other songs that are larger than life, but you know, it was very extrovert. But can you explain a bit more? This this sonic template. What what what? Um, if all the albums in the past were more introvert, 
um, we very much so created music that would uh, that would reflect that uh, that introvert feelings and topics and themes that would go on inside a, a, a human's uh, thought process and, uh, and, and would make you feel a kaleidoscope of feelings. Okay, but you know, but this one I suppose is a bit more extrovert. We're commenting on we have a song called "Divided States of America." We have a song called "Makeup." Uh, a song called "Written to Scars." We're, we're we're almost I think this time. Uh, written Scars is probably a perfect example where people are walking around with a lot of issues and a lot of problems and we can easily judge a person and we tolerance is, be is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller when we're just saying that you, everyone is, it's, it's amazing that everybody's different, it's really good that everybody's yeah. different, that's what gives us our uh, uniqueness and it makes us interesting so wear your scars loud and proud and, um, and that's what we're kind of saying in that song and so songs like that end up being themes that we, we ended up guiding ourselves towards. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.